Dear friends, dear comrades, it's hard to talk after Paul, after what he said and outlined our priorities on which he worked so hardly, tirelessly, for almost eight years now. You don't appoint a leader. The leader comes out with his actions, with his positions, with the force of internal belief which is transferred to other people. And this is something what Paul has always had. And you always have it now, you'll have it in the future. Dear Paul, I would like first of all to thank you wholeheartedly for everything what you did for the PES as a political party, as a political family of people who have common values, who fight for these values. Because without this, everything else doesn't matter. I thank you for your emotion, because you cannot win people on your side. Even if you say the strongest words, the best programs, if people don't feel that you are convinced. You have always been giving us this force of your internal conviction in that what you are doing, what we are doing, is right and is in the interest of the ordinary, average European citizens. Because they need our party. Eight years ago, as Martin said, PES was not what it is now. We were not such a strong pan-European party and organization. We didn't have these 20,000 activists in hundreds of cities around Europe. Eight years ago, we were less united. We were more in government. But we were weaker in our common positions. Eight years ago, we didn't have the Global Progressive Forum. We didn't have our think tanks, and we were not so open to the civil society as we are today. And tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, the PS Progressive Convention will be another great, exciting proof of what you have been doing, Paul, for so many years. So, Thank you for all this from the bottom of my heart. And I believe this is shared by everyone in this hall and by dozens of thousands of PS activists around Europe. Let me wish you strength and good health. We are expecting you to come back to work together again on our priorities, which you also outlined in the last years especially during the crisis. Let me say a few personal words about this confidence which my party, which I received today from the Presidium with the mandate until the next regular Congress of the PS. I'm deeply moved. It's a great honor. You know, in the years when the Socialist Party was not a member of the Socialist International, was not a member of the PES. We were dreaming of becoming members of our family. There were missions coming and testing us, having long conversations for hours, sometimes for days, with different people, very skeptical about my party. Can it modernize? Can it change? Can it reform? And then, during these conversations, I realized that being a member of our family, of the PS, is not a formal thing. It's not just a matter of international legitimation. It's not a matter of being part of a powerful political family. Everything is only about values. If you don't believe in the values of 
democracy, human rights, the values of solidarity and social justice, you cannot belong to our family. We are not like the EPP. They are ready to absorb anyone who is strong and powerful at the moment, who can strengthen them for a while, irrespectively of their policies and visions. We are different. And this is why it's a great honor for me as the leader of the Bulgarian Socialist Party to have this confidence from the Party of European Socialists. I can tell you in the next year, I'll do everything I can to continue what you have started and developed in the last eight years, Paul, all together, of course. And I would like briefly to share some of the major priorities and challenges which we are facing in the next year. First of all, we have to continue to establish ourselves as a viable alternative to what is happening in Europe, in the European Union during this economic crisis. Because Europe went the wrong way. At the beginning of the crisis, I was optimistic. Because Europe was acting in a much more adequate way in comparison to America. But then people said, okay, the governments, the Commission, the European Central Bank bailed out the banks, those who created the crisis. Now it's time to support and to help the people. Then a turn happened. The right wing is becoming stronger in the European elections of 2009, then in many national elections, and they changed the agenda of the European Union in a wrong direction without real political leadership, without vision of how to come out from the crisis. Because every decision they are taking is taken with a huge delay, too late and too little. And now the crisis is going deeper. And I'm completely confident that what they're doing today is wrong again. It's wrong in a style when free prime ministers are saying what the European Union should do is wrong in essence because not only the budgets are important to be balanced, the societies have to be balanced. They need social justice. And it is wrong also from a democratic point of view. So in the next months, we should work all together very hard to continue our alternative policy in tackling the economic and financial crisis. This is the first priority for all of us. Secondly, I was speaking about values, but this crisis is not only an economic and social crisis. Democracy in the European Union is not the same. Many right-wing governments and politicians are ignoring and undermining our fundamental democratic principles and the functioning of a democracy. Hannes mentioned the cases of Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, Italy in many ways, but it's not only them. We are facing huge deficits of democracy in Europe, and this is challenging the whole European project. This is why we should fight in every case when see a violation of democratic principles anywhere around the European Union. Thirdly, I believe that the PS strong is strong when the PS to be strong is through the strength of our member parties at the first place. Next year we're facing elections in Greece, in France, in Slovakia, in Lithuania, possibly in some other countries, because early elections may happen in Italy, for example. And I believe that we should do everything in our strength of the PES, the group of the Socialists and Democrats of every national party to support our comrades in their fight, in their campaigns, because we have to show solidarity. We can change the trend in the European Union if we change 
also the trend in the national states. This is our common responsibility and we shall work hard on this. Fourthly, in 2009 we started the process of rethinking, reinventing our values in the modern context because the world has changed, time has passed and in order to be credible we need to do what we did today and this was a serious process. We shall continue it in order to come out with our fundamental program for the future and to come out to the next European elections with a strong manifesto. This year will be part of this process which you, Paul, started in Prague in 2009. And finally, of course, it is very important, and I'll do my best, to provide a smooth transition to the new leadership, which will have to accomplish all these tasks, tasks in the next year with a full mandate from the Congress of the Party of European Socialists. But no one can do all these things on her or his own. It's far too big as a task. This is why, dear friends, I will count on you. I will count on Philip Corderi, on Zita Gurmai, on Martin Schulz and cooperation with the group of socialists and Democrats. Of course, on the excellent staff which was developed in the last years of the PES. And also on every leader, every member of our common family because in the last years the European right wing, the European conservatives are saying austerity is the only way out. Cut, cut, cut. Average people should pay the price. We have the obligation to show that there is an alternative, that this alternative can happen and then we can change the trend in Europe. But the only precondition for this is to work hard, to work together, and I believe that this time we can really do it, and we shall do it together. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>